I believe we're going live. Welcome to our live stream. This is our fifth, sixth, or seventh live stream, I think. And we plan to keep doing them because they're fun. I like interacting with my peeps. This is Dr. Dark, as you can see on uh, on the shirt here, otherwise known as Dr. David E. Clark, PhD, Inc. The ink part's not necessary to say, but uh, you can call me Dave if you want. And if you're listening to the replay, we welcome you as well. Today's topic is counseling and the narc. It's very easy to make mistakes in the counseling area with the narc involved. I'll help you avoid those mistakes today. We have an actual therapist uh, checking in, which is good. Love to talk to therapists. Uh, we have, of course, so much in common. I've been at this almost 40 years, so very good. We'd like to have some therapists as well as just regular folks understand um, uh, counseling and the narc. Okay, very good. Yeah, I'll check in with you a bit later. Uh, a few items as we start, we have to do commercials. Dr. Clark has to make a living. Uh, the blonde Sandy is busy remodeling our home and uh, you people have to help me. Uh, I need money. Anyway, not really. We're doing fine, but uh, we have to get the uh, products out there. Uh, my, you may be aware, may not be, of my brand, line, brand new online video series, The Freedom From Your Narc Journey, available now on the website, davideclarkphd.com. That's Clark with an E. This video series gives you an overview of the entire escape process. If you're just beginning, it's perfect for you. If you're somewhere in the middle, it's good for you. If you're near the end, it's still going to be helpful to you. And it covers all four books I've got on the escape process. You've got the whole thing covered. I'm not just going to tell you to leave. I will. I'll tell you exactly how to leave and why biblically you need to leave and, and the support biblically. We've got 20 lies, which covers the codependent piece, getting strong enough to get ready to leave. We've got Enough is Enough, the Moody Publishing book. Miracle of Miracles, Moody published this. And uh, this is the biblical support for leaving and exactly how to prepare to leave and to get your kids ready to leave. Then escaping your narcissist, what to expect when you divorce a narc. I'm going to get you through the divorce process because you're going to be divorced almost certainly. The narc won't file, but you can and probably should. And then afterwards, I didn't want to divorce. Now what? Uh, reset, heal, recover, manage the narc and manage your children. So we got the whole thing covered. And the video series, in essence, you know, is an overview of these four books, and I think very affordable and helpful to you. For everything Dave Clark related, go to the website. Everything's there, davideclarkphd.com. I do phone advice sessions every week, interact with people. I confirm they're with the NARC. Uh, I encourage them at any point in the, in the, in the process with the NARC. Other marital crisis too. Of course, I have other books and other topics as well. You name the marital crisis, I've got a book for it. Also, just as a little bit of information here, I'm going to be on In the Market with Janet Parshall tomorrow night. That's July 18, I believe, isn't it? Uh, Wednesday night, 5 to 6 Eastern. She's brilliant. She's godly. She likes me. At least she still does. We get along very well. And I'll be talking about my recent book, Adult Children Who Break Your Heart, Adult Prodigals Involved in Sin rejecting you, rejecting God really, and how to how to handle those scenarios. And of course, many of you know, living with a narc, divorcing a narc, very often they will turn the kids against you and it takes some time to get them back. So that's also handled in that book. Now I'm going to check in online, see what's going on. And then I'm, I'm going to present some material on uh, counseling in the narc. And uh, of course, I want to get your input too, experiences you've had uh, with counseling, good and bad. Some folks are, 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 are coming in. Yeah, the divorce is brutal. Absolutely it is. More financial abuse and he keeps prolonging it. These narcs never quit. And that's why they're evil. Not just messed up and dysfunctional and screwed up. Yeah, they're all that. Incredibly selfish. They're evil. They want to continue to do damage to you. That's one of the reasons I wrote the Escaping Your, Your Narcissist book. To get through the divorce. Survive. Win the best way you can. Protect you and your children. And after the divorce, it doesn't quit. You've got to maintain your vigilance. We just hope and pray the narc will find another supply. We'd like to warn the entire female population in the world we can't do that. They should have a label on their head, back off, I'm a narc. But if they find someone else, typically it, it can ease up. Okay. These are folks helping each other. Yeah, very good. 22 years to an ex narc. Free for nine years, praise God for you. Rebuilt my life from nothing. And that's probably what it's going to take. It's worth it getting away from a narc, no matter. I'm telling you right now what it costs you, and it will cost you a tremendous amount. 
the worst thing you can do is stay with the narc. Okay, let me let me cover uh, some of this uh, counseling in the narc material, and then you can continue to chime in. And again, we this is a community. We're helping each other here. The, the information for all four of these books has come from my own practice, my own working with people, and the input I've gotten from the community online. Okay, point number one, and it's an important one. Don't go to marriage counseling with a narc. Many people have made this mistake and continue to. It's an absolute waste of time and money. It will, in fact, do more harm to you. It's not just a waste of time and money. It is. It's worse than that. It will do harm to you. The narc will love marriage counseling. Not many narcs will simply refuse to go. Okay, fine. But there are many more that will go. And they will throw you under the bus. And they'll charm the counselor. And they'll control the sessions. Oh, my goodness. Don't do it. Just about everybody, especially pastors and even Christian counselors and, and people that live in your neighborhood and who are clueless and haven't gone to psychology school, thinks that think that marriage counseling with a narc is a good idea. They'll say to you, well, if your spouse is willing to go, well, I guess that's a good sign. No, it's not a good sign. If the narc goes, he'll simply go to look good. He has no intention of changing. He doesn't have to change. He's perfect. You're the problem. It's a classic virtue signal. And he'll fit into his narrative beautifully because from then on, even if it goes to just one stinking session, let alone two or three, I've had people waste six months with a narc in marriage counseling. I mean, in that case, the counselor is, a, is clueless too because it's a waste of time. You should know in the first session or at most by the second if you've got a narc on your hands. But he'll say from now on, I, I went to marriage counseling. And people that don't know any better will go, well, wow, you must be a wonderful person. I, I can't believe. Well, what happened? Well, that fits the narrative. It's your fault. He'll tell everybody that will listen, the Timmy down the street that's walking the dog and the lady next door and your pastor and people at church and your family and his crazy family. I went to marriage counseling. Well, it doesn't make any difference. He will enjoy, the narc will enjoy manipulating the counselor. Many counselors, Christian counselors, are nice, sweet, loving, godly people. Uh, much nicer than I am. That wouldn't be say, being trying too hard to do that. But <laughs> you know what? They don't know what they're doing with a narc. They'll get run over like a Mack truck. And he will love, he'll be entertained, the narc will, in turning the counselor against you and controlling the sessions. Marriage counseling is for normal non-narc spouses with relationship problems. I did that work for 35 years. I did, I, if I had a narc on my hands, I wouldn't see the people together. All right. But if I had two reasonable people, even a, even a horrible marriage, okay, we're going to work together on this. That's what marriage counseling is for. It's not ever for a narc. So here's what happens when you go to marriage counseling with a narc. And many of you I know can relate to this. He'll lie his head off, of course, number one. And these narcs are masters at lying and deception and deceitfulness, manipulation. Oh, They'll cry on demand in the session. And it looks like when a guy breaks down, let's say it's a guy, it could be a woman too. Well, it, it tends to get the counselor's attention. It shouldn't. So he'll lie. He'll charm the counselor. He'll control the sessions. He will set the tone. He'll make it all about your mistakes and he'll get away with it. Suddenly it becomes not about him, but about you, about the woman and the mistakes that you're making. He'll play the victim. Because you know what? You're the abuser, not him. Now, he'll, what also happens is he'll be kind and reasonable in the sessions and charming and I'm, I'm at fault or I should do that and I, yeah, I'm going to take care of this. And then on the way home, you won't get two feet down the road in your car when he's taking your head off, blasting you, mean, nasty. You'll be made to pay for if you have the nerve to bring up anything about him in the sessions, oh, oh you're going to pay dearly. The counselor doesn't have a clue on that. And if you tell the counselor, he'll just lie and say you're lying. And of course, the narc's not going to do any homework. All the work I used to do when I saw couples together was homework based. Now, I got around this because if you don't do my homework, I'm not going to see you. But the narc is never going to do any homework. You'll do the homework. He won't. Again, waste of time. Any, I'm telling you right now, any counselor worth his, his or her salt, if they give you homework, and you show up the next session and you don't have your homework and that counselor still sees you and charges you, wrong counselor. That's not the way you do counseling. If you don't do my homework, I'm not seeing you. 
you may still pay for the session if you don't, because all you have to do is call me the day before and I won't see you and I won't charge you. But if you have the nerve to walk into my office and you haven't done your homework, I'll charge you and I won't see you. Now, I may never see you again because you're mad at me. I don't care. I'm not going to lose you. If you, you lose the case the first time you give homework and you don't require it to be done. Now, and here's the truth. Even if you have a tough counselor like someone like me, who's not particularly nice and it's kind of rough, uh, who will confront the narc early on, maybe even in the first session because you know you know what you're doing, you still lose. It's still a waste of time and money because the narc will bolt and never return to that counselor. If they're called on the carpet and they know they can't get away with the manipulation, well, they'll never come back. Waste of your time. And don't be thinking, especially you ladies, don't be thinking, or even you men, I want to bring my person to a to a counselor and and so they can they can tell they can tell me if he's a narc or not. I can tell you that in a phone advice session. 45 minutes. I I, I know what to ask. I, I get the history. You're the expert on what you're living with. You you'll you'll tell me and I'll tell you, yeah, he's a narc or no, he's not a narc. That's easy to do. He doesn't have to be there. And also don't be expecting and thinking this is going to help you to have a counselor like me call out your narc and call him a narc or, or make him work. He's, it's like, it doesn't help you. It doesn't help you. It's, it's frankly a waste of time and he'll make you suffer for it. Now, what you point number two is you don't have a marriage problem on your hands. You have a narc problem. Two very different things. The solution is to get strong, get ready to leave and leave the narc. That is the only solution. Don't be thinking he's going to change. He won't. Or she won't. Female narcs are just as bad. Not going to change. Once you've left him or her, okay, they're going to have their opportunity to change. They're not going to, but they certainly will have the opportunity. Stop trying to change the narc or have somebody else like a counselor change the narc. Ain't going to happen. You're the one that needs to change. So if you're in marriage counseling right now, and some of you I know are with your narc, and he's even going to marriage counseling, stop going. Don't go to one more stinking counseling session that's a conjoint session, a marital session with a narc. It's a waste of time. You're not rude about it. You tell the narc and you can tell the counselor, I'm bowing out. I have to work. You tell him I have to work on my personal issues. So this is true. What the narc doesn't know and the counselor may not know is I, I need to get myself ready to leave you. I'm no longer going to waste my time because it actually debilitates you. And that'll fit his narrative too because he thinks you're nuts. And that'll be part of his narrative now. Well, she she stopped going to marriage. I was going to marriage counseling, I, and she stopped going. Well, who cares? I wouldn't worry about my reputation. He's going to smear it anyway. Here's the last point. They'll interact with some of you folks, that, all you folks that are online here, and uh, take your questions or, or your comments. You need to find the right individual counselor to do your work, to get healthy enough to leave the narc and deal with the divorce process, because that's the counseling you need. Not, not about the marriage and changing the narc and having the situation. No, that's codependent thinking. You need to get past that. Now, the next live stream I'm planning on doing is going to be how to choose the right individual therapist and the do's and don'ts of that, because you can choose the wrong individual therapist too. All right. And in fact, what we're, what we're trying to develop here is a nationwide referral service, not just of trained, licensed Christian therapists. Focus on the family has that. What I'm looking for are therapists that understand this lane, that understand codependency, understand narcissism, and they're tough, and they can help the uh, the victim of the narc, the other spouse, the normal one, the codependent one, heal from codependency and leave that person. And I'm telling you right now, there aren't many therapists like that. I'm looking for them in every state. In every city, we're going to have a nationwide network and we're going to send an email blast out trying to develop this network, which I think would be very, very helpful. I'll still do my phone advice sessions, but I'm not an ongoing therapist anymore. Don't have the patience, don't have the time doing social media, writing, all this stuff. So uh, phone sessions is what I'm doing, but I only do one of those, maybe two on when I need ongoing therapists. Uh, and I'll be making that appeal at the next live stream. If you can be thinking, if you know a good therapist. All right, and one that understands narcissism, hopefully is is it follows Jesus Christ, well trained, gets it. All right, then you email that to me. Uh, I'll make another appeal next live stream, but that's to David E. Clark, PhD at gmail.com. Just send me the names and, and we'll put them on our list. Okay, very good. Well, let's see what's going on online here. Oh boy. 
My narc husband died suddenly before our divorce was final. Oh my goodness, is it unchristian for me to be glad he's gone? Oh, no, it is not. You might not drink champagne, even though it's tempting, and nobody wants anybody to die, but you know what? That is, and this lady knows this, that's God taking the narc out, and God will take the narc out. Check out 1 Samuel 25 in the Bible. Abigail and Nabal, Nabal, miserable, nasty narc, and God took his butt out absolutely killed him. So, no, I'd feel good about it. You might not broadcast that. The narc is dead banner over your home. Of course not. But you know what? You're happy and you're, and, and, and you're thanking God for that. There is nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He was out to destroy me mentally. Vicky, yeah, I'm telling you, that's exactly what the narc will do. Wants to destroy you. Knows he's doing it and is enjoying the process. That's sick. That's evil. Let's see, I'm checking out the uh, checking out the TikTok people too. Yes, I am. Yeah, pe people are interacting here. Yeah, yeah. Infidelities, yeah, very, very often the case. Uh, this TikTok lady says, yeah, with the narc. Oh, absolutely. One woman is never enough for the narc. Oh, no. There's a line out the door. I was talking to a lady just last week, and uh, she was she's not married to the guy, which is a blessing. She's having some trouble leaving him because she's codependent. Okay, we're working on that. And, and that's what the 20 Lies book is all about, the codependent piece. But she was telling me that that he was, she had found out he's been with multiple women. And he informed her, and he's very proud to do so, that uh, many women want him. In fact, every woman that pretty much sees him wants him. <laughs> I mean, that's ridiculous, but that's how the narc really thinks. God's gift to women. Oh, yeah, can't service them all. Sick. She needs to get the heck away from him. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Okay, people are joining here on the on the TikTok. Yeah, 11 years, he's never done anything wrong. It's incredible, isn't it? Never makes a mistake, never. But you make all kinds of mistakes and the slightest thing you do wrong, he's all over it. The smallest details are magnified. You use the wrong term when you're speaking, he'll correct you in front of other people. You're telling a story in a social environment. And, and, you, and you, you get the details mixed up or he thinks you have, he'll correct you. You don't do that if you're normal in front of your spouse and on and on and on. You don't clean the house the right way. You've gained weight. Um, you know, you, you're, you're not as attractive as it used to be. Some lady told me today, a, a guy was, a narc was, again, she's not married to him, which is good. Uh, but he's, he's beginning to criticize her weight. She's, you know, she's, I think in her mid fifties and, you know, things tend to change. I said, ma'am, if you if you're married to a man, he needs to tell you and believe that you're the most beautiful woman on this earth. Always. I don't care if you're 85 with a humpback. You are the most beautiful woman in the world. And if you don't have that, you've got a problem on your hands. Yeah, the constant criticism. Constant. Yeah. Yeah, this is exactly what an arc does. Breaks me down and then comes to try to comfort me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They get you coming and going, break you down, make you cry, have you, and then and come along and comfort you. You know what? I don't think so. Sick, 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 sick. Now here's a story. Youth pastors at a church, 22 years, this dear lady says, at working together in ministry. And when she left him, he's a narc, he slandered her to the entire congregation. And guess what? It worked. He's the youth pastor. And of course, when you're with a narc, and, and whether you're in ministry or not, you tend to protect your husband, don't you? You tend to protect the narc. You don't want to broadcast it. You're hoping they'll change. You're trying to protect the family. That works against you, of course, when you leave him, because then he, I can't believe she's left. And then you're the one that's slandered. Classic narc behavior. Sleaze balls of the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this guy, she was doing the laundry wrong. She's left him. She divorced last year. Good for you, Care Bear. He explained how he hung up his laundry and then he started doing the laundry. I did it wrong to him. <laughs> you know what? I'm married to a lady, the blonde. I'm telling you right now, if I ever criticize the way she does laundry, you know what would happen? She'd say, hey, that's great, Dave. You're doing the laundry from now on. Dave is smarter than that. All right. Doesn't take a PC to figure that out. Or if I ever criticized the meal and she's a wonderful cook. I mean, she's a brilliant person. Well, she married me. <laughs> anyway, she wasn't sure what she was getting. But if I criticized a meal, it'd be the same thing. Wow, Dave, really? You're now the cook. That's how you handle it. I, I mean, incredible. And that's how you should handle your narc. Make your own food, buzz boy. 
Oh, look, mine tried to poison me. I've heard stories like this. Wow. Order of protection got him out. Now divorce proceedings. Good for you. And you're divorcing a narc. I'm telling you what, get this book, Escaping Your Narcissist. I wrote it for you. No Christian publisher would touch this with a 10 foot pole. I didn't even ask because I'm not going to wait for them to publish it and change what I say because they're offended. I don't care. I'm following the Bible and it's biblically based, but it is how to survive a divorce with a narc. Tried to put po- these people are incredibly evil. I'm not surprised he tried to poison you. And really, in a way, they poison you anyway. If it's not your food, they are poisoning your whole life and ruining your health and ruining your emotional health. Oh boy, Dr. Glocky criticized my food and then took over my kitchen. <laughs> and alive. See, that's the narc too. He might actually enjoy taking over the kitchen and, and cooking because he gets the attention and, and, and he can control it. You don't do that to a woman's kitchen. Also, I've had story after story of narcs, you know, and this is just, if, if you're a man and you're married to a lady and, and um, don't ever forget, that is her home. You're a guest there. And, and she, in my opinion, she should be allowed. Now you, you can have input like anybody cares, but you could, you can say, well, I'd kind of like this. You, that is her domain. And it makes her happy to remodel and to do this and to change that. I have always let Sandy do that. And she's brilliant at it. And our home is beautiful. I don't notice much, but people tell me it's beautiful, but I, it makes her happy. But the narc will want to control everything. Even if he has no sense of interior design at all, and he's the biggest idiot in the world in that area. Who cares? He likes to control things. Yeah, crazy, crazy, crazy. Oh, an ebook. Yeah, all in fact, all of these, all of these books are ebooks. Now, the self-published ones are paperback and ebook, either one on the website. The uh, enough is enough you can get in all you can get audio book. It's a moody book, so it's it's everywhere. You don't have to get it from me, even though that would help me if you did. Yeah, these stories are heartbreaking. They absolutely are. Yeah. Yep. 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 That's why along the way, and this, this is covered in 20 lies. You are starting to get strong. You're starting to get your voice bit by bit. And you're going to especially work on the children. And if he calls you, if a narc calls you down in front of the kids and criticizes you in front of the kids, and he loves to do that and he wants you to take it. And if you say nothing back, you're losing those kids. And they're going to be turned against you. You speak up not to change the narc. He's never going to change. You speak up and I, and I cover this in the book in a number of different ways, strategic statements. You drop it in, you move on to make sure that the kids know you're, this is wrong. This is abuse. You're not taking it. He won't change and he'll be furious if you do it, but, the, but you're trying to save your relationship with your children. He calls you out and embarrasses you in a social environment. You hit him right back in that environment because you're protecting your own reputation. And also keep in mind, you are gaining strength. You're gaining your voice. You are not going to let him continue to treat you this way without a response. Now, he'll keep treating you that way, but you're responding and you're getting stronger, not weaker. Going to speak with a lawyer tomorrow. Good for you, Kat. It's exactly the right thing to do. If you're living with a narc, make sure you get a tough, aggressive, mean, gutter dwelling attorney. I am telling you, not a jerk. All right. I shouldn't say gutter dwelling, but I mean really hard nosed and it's going to fight for you and likes to win and is experienced. Don't get the milk to- milk toast attorney. They lose. In our system of justice, which is a joke anyway, the best attorney always wins. Always, always, always. So you better have the better attorney. Going to cost you more. Okay, so be it. <laughs> Got her attorney. She liked that. The therapist, I have one. Good for you. Oh, yeah, very, very important. Talk to a lady just, uh, I think, just yesterday who's got a milk toast attorney, who's losing big time. She is fighting for custody of a, of a, this is a, a very small child. I forget the state, but I said, look, you fire that attorney, fire him today. He's milk toast. Doesn't return her calls, could care less about her case. Is, 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 is saying, well, the state requires 50, 50, and that's all you can get. This is a small child. I said, baloney, fire his butt. Do it today. Find one. Call your domestic violence, local domestic violence shelter. Call, they, they usually have their hands in a lot of pies. Uh, the women's center, divorce care leaders. You're going to find the best attorney you can who's tough to protect your rights. Everything in our system is negotiable. Well, the state might say 50, 50. That doesn't mean that's what it's going to end up being. You can fight and you can win if you have the right attorney. Here's a good one. What are the, what are the questions? This is like, uh, 
Is that it's Spanish? Casitos? I like the, what are the questions? Casitos. See, I can speak Spanish. To ask an attorney to know it's the right attorney. Okay. You want to have a good, solid referral. All right. So I mentioned the domestic violence center, the, uh, the women's center, the, the, um, the divorce care leaders. You want someone with experience. You want someone who's just, their very demeanor is tough. They are strong. You don't want some some guy on a, on a, on a billboard somewhere smile like a fool. You want someone that's tough, that's stern. Ladies or men, and I even prefer the lady attorneys in many cases, but men can be tough too. Tough, experienced, understands narcissism. You will say one of your first questions, even online, or if you're questioning their, their paralegal or their secretary, does this attorney understand what a narcissist is? If there's a pause, hang up. You want someone that understands, yes, I've had these kind of cases. I understand what I'm dealing with. You want someone who wants to win, who will fight for you. All right. So these are the qualifications. Doesn't have listen to me, doesn't have to be a Christian. Could be. Hey, that'd be great. I'm a Christian and I can be mean. That's fine. But you know what? It doesn't have to be. God can use a non-Christian to get the job done. Tenacious, has a track record. Th that's those are the questions to ask. And of course, you make it a matter of prayer, but you want to get good referrals. You talk to people that you know. We all know people that have been divorced. You check with them. And ask them the same questions. Was it tough? Was the person tough? How did how did they how do they do for you? You're trying to get, and of course, there's reviews online. You can check those too. Yeah, he's refused to leave the home. Yeah, narcs very rarely leave the home, and almost in every state, you can't force them out unless there's domestic violence, a physical violence thing. The court understands that. They don't care about emotional abuse typically. So, yeah, they they won't leave. You're gonna have to leave ridiculous. I know you're going to, the attorney, the right attorney will protect your rights to the home. Make no question about that, but you're probably going to have to leave. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure when you leave, you take things that are very precious to you. Cause once you leave, he's going to destroy all those things or he'll sell them at a garage sale or he'll break them. Okay. Take the things that are very important to you. Yeah. Yeah, again, and this is handled in the book too. You're going to have to change the escaping your narc. Make sure he's not tracking you on your phone. Make sure you've changed all your passwords. Make sure you get a burner cell phone. You, you, these narcs will track you and they'll and they'll hack into your systems and they want to know what you're doing and what you're thinking. You got to screen all that out. The right attorney will also know how to do that and maybe who to recommend some computer person or phone person that can protect you in the electronic world that we're living in. Also very important. This isn't the normal divorce where two people are miserable and okay, they're getting divorced. Okay, that's bad. This is not that. These are normal, reasonable people that want to co-parent and all that. <laughs> you don't have that. You have an enemy on your hands and that's how you have to operate. How do I leave when it's my house? Okay, different story, Monica. Th and this, this is for your attorney. If that home is in your name and you paid for it, there may be some uh, legal leeway here. You can kick his narc butt out. Wouldn't that be nice? Call the police and get rid of him. Hey, I have had a few cases like that. Depends on the state. You may still, it's like having a squatter. It may still be a problem since he's married to you. But if his name isn't on the deed and you, and you own the home, that might be a different story. All right. But you have to weigh this out. Um, in, in a normal divorce, as awful as that is, you can stay in the home. It's like super awkward and everybody's miserable, but it's not someone trying to destroy you as you divorce him. You, you're you going to have to leave that if he won't leave and you can't get rid of him. Yeah. Here's a situation where ask your husband to leave and he did leave. Okay, that's something. Been without him two years. That's why I think that there was, was a brain injury that may have had something to do with it since he wasn't ever this way. Yeah, that I've had cases like this. And it could be, but but listen to me, and this this seems awfully harsh. But if it's if it is a brain injury or some physical injury that turns him into a monster and he's destroying you, it doesn't make any difference if it's a brain injury. I'm just telling you, your pastor might not tell you that. I'm telling you that. I think God will tell you that. Why, why be destroyed? Even if, I mean, it wasn't his fault, but he has a brain injury or some horrible disease. It doesn't make a difference if, he, if he's ruining your life and destroying you. Nonetheless, you can divorce that person or, or stay separated, whatever works. You, you can't live with someone like that. Can't do it and shouldn't have to. Yet joint bank accounts when leaving. Oh yeah. Again, all covered in the Escaping Your Narc book. It's a pretty comprehensive book. It doesn't cover everything, but it covers a lot. Oh yeah. 
All that's going to be done before you leave. That's all the preparation steps. And some of this also, of course, is covered in uh, the Enough is Enough book. You're going to have your ducks in a row. Sometimes you have to leave suddenly. Okay, physical violence thing. Or you've just had enough. He's threatening. But better to have your ducks in a row. And so prior to leaving, you have your own bank account, all right? And you're going to take, in most states, it's 50-50. And you can take, with your attorney's guidance, you can take, or a financial person, you can take, you find out first where all the money is. And in many cases, you don't even know. You have to find that out before you leave. Okay, he may smell a rat and think, well, yeah, you're just finding out where the money is so you can leave me. You'll lie and say, no, I'm not leaving you. Actually, you are. But I'm your wife and I have the right to know, or your husband, I have the right to know where the money is. What if you died today? You're going to find that out and then you're going to take half of it. There's going to be yeah, bank accounts with only your name on it. You can't trust these banks. If his name's on the account, you're done. He'll find out. So you're going to cut off all kind of contact with him, legally, bank accounts, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Got to figure out the insurance. Got to take care of the bills. Most narcs will cut you off the moment you leave. Now, there may be a brief period of time where he'll love bomb you and act like he's repentant and please come back. If you don't respond to that, boom, the hatchet will come down and he will cut you off. Yeah, many narcs have substance abuse issues. Yes, they do. And you know what I say to that? Too stinking bad. I could care less and I want you to care less. That they'll, they'll try to curry sympathy. If you've got a substance abuse problem, okay, fix it. We have therapies out the wazoo for every substance abuse issue. We've got Celebrate Recovery. Try, I've got trained therapists I refer to locally here that know exactly what they're doing with alcohol and drug abuse. Okay, difficult process, sure. But the relapse after relapse after relapse is ridiculous. Who cares? You can divorce that person if they're not going to change and going to spend all your money and going and to terrorize you with their stupid substance abuse problem. It's a disease. I don't care. It's sin. Get rid of him unless he's going to change. Fair is fair. He'll have his chance. Of course, if you've got a narc on your hands, here's the problem. He's still a narc. If, he's not, if, he, if he gets sober, he's still a narc. That, that's not going to solve your problem, uh, almost certainly. Yeah, flying monkeys, I tell you what. The people, they get on their side. It's unbelievable, TikTok people and, and Facebook folks. Oh, they're brilliant at this. Neighbors, friends, friends that have been your friends for years, years, he'll turn them against you. Pastors, pastors are very easily manipulated. Most, in my experience, don't have a clue. They love the Lord. They love the word of God. They preach it. They're good at many things. They don't have a clue when it comes to narcs. They'll be turned against you. He'll turn your own family against you. He, and certainly his crazy family, he'll send all kinds of people, fly monkeys at you to torture you. You cut them all off. You show them the hand. You're not going to deal with them. You must have on your support team people that absolutely and 100% support you. They're on your side. If any loser says to you, someone that you thought was a friend, even your pastor, well, I don't want to take sides. You cut that person off. You walk away without a word. You're done with them. All right, they're dead to you. Because the Bible says we are to take sides. We side with the, with the person that's being destroyed, that's being sinned against. <laughs> it's just that simple. So don't, don't go with someone who wants to, wants to play the middle ground. Uh-uh. Nope, you're done with that person. Oh, yeah, mine turned to religion. Oh, oh, yeah. And it looked pretty good going forward. Coming to Jesus, recommitting my life. I'm going to men's group. I'm talking to the pastor. I'm I'm mowing the lawn at the church. I, I'm tithing. You know what? It's bogus. If eight months from now he's walking with the Lord and he's and he's done a ton of work on himself, you might begin to believe it. This is a con. He knows the desire of your heart. Most Christian women, of course, almost all want a godly man someone who's walking with Jesus. So he'll present the image that he's walking with Jesus. No, he's not. He's walking with the devil. He's pretending. Don't buy it. Do not buy it. I'll tell you what to look for with the con job, with the fake repentance, with the love bombing after you have filed divorce. It's in the Escaping Your Narcissist book. I want to get you ready for that. Big con job. Oh, mine is repentant, but took off his wedding ring. Well, what does that tell you? You know as well as I do, he's not repentant. You never take off your, I've never taken this ring off. If I operated heavy equipment, I might take it off for the, for the day. I'd put it right back on because that's a symbol of my love for the blonde. So baloney, when they say they're repentant, 
That means someone who absolutely gets it, broken, contrite, behavior change, owning all the problems, and consistent. Now, and we'll tell you the truth, a repentant guy, Narc, will come to you and chapter and verse tell you what he's done wrong. And he'll tell you things you don't even know. Most narcs, they won't tell you anything unless you find out. Well, he'll tell you. There'll be a lot of things you can tell. And again, those are enough is enough. How to tell if a narc's repentant or not, I'll let you know in this book. Yeah. This lady wished she'd known me before, back when I was leaving. Well, it's okay. You're, you're still ahead of the game. Every lady I talk to, I talk to mostly ladies, but some men, and some are 65, some are 70, some are, are, are pushing 80. And they feel bad because they're just now leaving. And I say, ma'am, sir, you, don't worry. Now's the time. God loves you. Whatever time you have left, God's going to bless. You're still ahead of the game because no, you know, most people don't leave. Don't worry about the time frame. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, the things you'll find out after the narc leaves this TikTok, TikTok lady says, and God will provide this information. You'll start hearing things. You'll start discovering things about him that you never knew. And it's all going to be ugly and nasty. And you're going to go, wow, I never knew. They live a double life. Every narc does. They're into stuff. You have no idea what's going on. And it'll just be more confirmation that you've made the right decision. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this this dear lady listening to me, she says, helped her along the path. Good. Worst time of my life once I decided to end it. I know you're going to be in for it. I'm trying to get you ready and get through the divorce process. It's going to be ugly. They'll make it a living nightmare. There's no question, but you can get through and you will get through. The only, the only thing worse than that is actually staying with these dirtballs. <laughs> a triple life, uh, this lady says, Shay, <laughs> exactly. They can be into all kinds of things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why most narcs control the money, because that allows them to leave no trail for what they're actually into. Pornography, uh, prostitutes, uh, gambling, uh, spending their money, uh, you know, uh, in actual adulterous affairs, uh, stupid business deals. They're, they, 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 most narcs, of course, they're brilliant, and they think they are, and they'll play the stock market and day trades. They lose their shirts because they're stupid in, in those areas, and, but you don't know because you don't know where the money is. You'll find out. You'll find out. And again, God is faithful. He will allow you to rebuild and he will help you rebuild your life. It may be from next to nothing. I'm talking to a lady on, on email back and forth a bit and she's, she's going to be in debt pretty seriously thanks to her stupid narc and, and her lawyer messed her over. So she's going to have to rebuild. I said, ma'am, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He, he's going to take care of you. It's going to take time. You're going to rebuild. He's faithful to you. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. They're terrible with money. Yeah, most narcs are, and addicted to porn. Oh, and yeah, this he, she's lived this nightmare and day trading. Oh yeah, yeah. Good point. Both give them dopamine surges. See, that's addiction. It's the feeling. It isn't even what you're doing. It's the feeling. It's the rush. It's the adrenaline. And you know what? It costs you money. I would never. Sandy and I have always made financial decisions together, and. uh, I don't gamble anyway. And we hate this Indian casino that's down the street from us. Hate it. Every time I drive by the Blancos, I hate that place. <laughs> I say, yeah, me too. We hope it burns down. No one's killed, but it burns down. Anyway, we're not going to do that. But um, yeah, that you, you, I, we always make decisions together because we're a team. Of course. This lady's in the thick of it and he won't leave the house. Yeah, I know. Yep. Yep. Won't, it won't respond to discoveries. Of course not. Upsets the children daily. Nightmare, but God is good. Yes, he is. God's faithful. He's going to get you through. And again, you're going to have an attorney when he, and most narcs won't get their stuff in on time legally. They'll stall. They'll, and they, but they expect you to have all your stuff in on time. The right attorney knows how to play the game and, and make that mark look bad in court, bad in front of the judge. And that's the job. You don't let him off the hook. You use every bit of leverage you possibly can against the narc legally. That's how the game is played. Now, you don't deal with the narc at all directly about the divorce. You never talk to him about it. You, everything goes to the attorney. But you want someone tough who can get the job done. Yeah, last, this Eileen's waiting for the last minute stunts he's going to pull, and he's going to. He's got a few more weeks to file an appearance for the divorce before it defaults in my favor. Yeah, he, at the last second. Yeah, he'll come through. 
he wants to make you sweat and, 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 and suffer. Okay. That's just how they operate. Yeah. 71 going through a divorce. Good for you. You've got 15 good more years or maybe more than that. Yeah. Oh, the adult children are telling her she's lying about the abuse and gaslighting. Oh, yeah, I've heard that a million times. For heaven's sake, I've got a book for that, too. You'll be shocked to hear. Adult children who break your heart. And that is a heartbreaking situation. Telling your 71-year-old mother that she's a liar. You see, that narc has won them over. And they're too stupid to know it so far. Let's play the long game. There's a whole plan of action in adult children who break your heart. You get that book. It's only on my website. Again, didn't offer to any Christian Christian publisher. Don't need to do that anymore. Anyway, but you'll you'll find a whole game plan to get their attention, build your respect, and maybe they'll come around in time. But how dare how dare they call you a liar? You have to push back on that. Disgraceful. My goodness. As if you'd have any reason to lie about something like that. It's crazy. Of course, what they'll do, and I've said this before many times, they will spend your entire child your entire child's life behind the scenes, turning them against you. And so when you do leave them, they are ready. And they've got other people set up to be against you, and you have to expect that. Well, thank goodness for Lena. Her her children see who their narc father is, and some don't even talk to him. Good for them. Oh, yeah. You would never say to an adult child who's cut off his narc father or her narc father, oh, give dad a break. No. No, no, he should be cut off. Nothing wrong. It's always up to the adults. They can do what they want, your children. But you know what? I am fine. You don't ask them to cut him off. But if they do, yes, that might be worth a little bit of champagne. I'm just saying. That'd be fine. Yeah, yeah. Do they put everyone through hell because they're because of their childhood trauma? I, I don't care. It doesn't make a difference. Again, if, they, if the narcos had childhood trauma, who the heck cares? I don't care. They can work through that trauma. We have therapies that help, that are effective. It may take him seven, eight months, whatever. He's never going to do that. So therefore, that becomes his sin. That's his choice, you see. No, no, trauma, does. there's nothing in the Bible that gives us any out for sin. Oh, childhood abuse or a problem here. No, 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 sin is still sin. Now, if you work on your issues with God's help, God's help, okay, everything can change. So as you can tell, I don't give a narc any break. I don't give anybody a break because that God doesn't. God will be right there with you if you repent and change. Fine. The narc's not going to do that. No, he's not. Oh, and they'll they'll try this too. And some of you may, many of you have had this happen. When they're desperate, when you're leaving them, when they know that the gig is up, they will come up with, now it may be true and it may not be true, traumas in their past to make you feel sorry for them. I was, this is a classic narc technique. I was abused as a child. Well, stop the world, and I can't divorce you, and I have to stay with you because they're tugging on your heartstrings. You know what? Too bad. You still leave them. Now, if he wants to spend time, if it's even true, working on that, okay, fine. What? Why have I had spent 10 years in a living hell because of your childhood trauma that you haven't told me until right now? Don't buy it. Very likely a lie. If it is true, or his, or his ex treated him bad, or his mother, you, who the heck cares? Don't, I don't care. You shouldn't care. Move on. This lady's staying with her son in, in, in his condo. Good for you. It's a good boy. Good for you, son. So much peace. Oh, and this son has nothing to do with his father. Oh, this lady's hit the nail on the head. The most beautiful thing when you leave a narc is the peace. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Getting up in the morning, going through your day, not having to put up with his abuse, his shenanigans, the triggers that are everywhere. Everything triggers the dumb man. You look at him funny and, he, and he's triggered. All that's gone. You have peace and that's worth, I'm telling you right now, any price, that kind of peace that, that normal people have that you've never experienced. Of course, I, I know plenty of ladies especially who, and men, who grew up in a difficult home and were rejected and treated badly, all kinds of trauma. And of course, that leads them to marry a narc and so they never get a break. They've never had peace until finally they've had enough and they get healthy and they get a voice and they leave the narc. And now, now I can have peace. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's perfect. It's all my fault. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. 
Oh, what about the better or worse vows? And we shouldn't throw in the towel. And that's not a good example for the kids involved. Oh, yeah, I've heard that a million times. Pastors will often say this. Some Christian counselors will say this. When you're being viciously attacked and destroyed, you and your children, yeah, you throw in the towel. You say, look over there, and you run the other way, and you take your kids, and you get the heck out. That's not what the marriage vows are talking about, for better or for worse. That's life circumstances. That's The blondes and I have done this. We're old now. We're 63 years old. And she's 62. Like, oh, I want to give her any more, any more agency. Yes. And we've been through a lot of things together. There's been worse in our relationship. But it's not because of sin, horrible sin in one of our lives. That doesn't apply. The verses where you get away from the abuser apply. So you just blow people like that off. It's ridiculous. That's codependent thinking if you buy into that. No. If it was a typical situation where you had a financial reversal, it wasn't the fault of your husband, or you went through a difficult time or a health issue, of course you wouldn't leave the person over that. Then you'd be a dirtball. Of course not. We're talking about a monster who's literally destroying you piece by piece. No, no. You get away from that person. Yeah. Good question for a lawyer. What if, he, what if uh, he bought the home uh, after we married? Am I still entitled to half? I don't, of course, he'll say you aren't. That's what the attorney's for. You have a list of questions for your attorney when you, when you see him or her the first time, and you're going to ask question, question, question. He'll have the answers to all the questions. It just depends on state law. And you'll know, and you do that, ideally, before you even leave the NARC, you're, you've figured out, you've seen the attorney on the QT, of course, and you've got all your ducks in a row, and you're ready to move the day you leave money taken, insurance canceled, all these things come together, and you need to know where you stand. Yeah. Lady had surgery, almost died. Didn't call or come see me, but he got a sprain and wanted uh, to be babysat and spoiled. (laughs) I know, Eileen, classic. Oh, yeah. If he's got a, a broken nail, it's a federal case. You know, she had surgery, almost died, and he could have cared less. That That's your answer. Oh, that is your answer. Get away from a person like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Good question here. How do I keep from being triggered after the divorce when he still threatens me? And he's still going to threaten you. They don't give up. He wants to continue to have control over you and know he's getting a reaction out of you. Number one, you expect him to continue to do it. And really, that's what divorce means. You lower the, unless you have children, you have to deal with them. You only deal with him on the kids and specific financial issues. That's it. You don't go any back and no back and forth dialogue, and you never let him know he's bothering you in the least. And typically, over time, they'll go away. If they're having no impact and they can't get to you and you're loving your life, you blow up social media, Facebook, everything else, Instagram with happy pictures of you enjoying your peaceful life. Peace without the narc. You can have on a t shirt, whatever. He'll see that and he'll hate it, but he'll move on to greener pastures because he's not having an impact. And again, this is why I wrote all these books. This dear lady needs, I didn't want a divorce, now what? This is this is the healing in the aftermath. You want to stay righteously angry through the divorce. You don't do this book until you're divorced, until you're out and it's done. But then you can pick up the pieces and heal and you'll have a much better life. That's why I wrote the book. I'm not going to leave you hanging. I don't tell you to leave and then don't, don't, don't help you after you leave. You always sign to talk to women. Oh, yeah. This is classic narc behavior, as I said before in the, in the live stream. They love women, and women love them. They can spot a skank a mile away, and the world's full of skanks, women that are worthless, and the Bible talks about them. And they'll play the game, and they will they might not uh, end up marrying your husband, but they'll play the game, and they'll sleep with them, and they'll flirt. Oh, they love They want some money. It's a game to them. They're just empty, soulless women. And you know what? Okay, who cares? Let them do it. Don't let that bother you. That's their problem. They'll pay the consequences of that in time from God himself. That's not your issue. Yeah, common law isn't recognized in my state. Yeah, some states don't. Yeah, shoot, 35 years and got nothing. I know, man alive, that just stinks. The legal system is is a joke, and that's not fair. But you do your best and you rebuild. Yeah, it's a cautionary tale. Yeah, boy. Oh, yeah, this this judge came through and, and, and called the husband out and found him guilty for family violence, and, and the guy cried and said the judge was wrong. See, and the, these narcs will pass a lie detector test. They, he thinks he never did anything wrong. 
And if he did put his hands on you, guess whose fault that was? That was your fault. That's what they think. At least this one judge came through. Man alive. Here's a good question. Why is it so scary to leave? Oh, it is scary to leave. I don't want to say this flipping like, ah, leave the guy. Who cares? You know what? You do need to leave. It's very frightening and it's very difficult to do. You're in a codependent addiction. You're used to being controlled. You don't want to get a divorce. You're worried about the children. You're, you're still hoping he can change. You're caught in this codependent time warp. And that's what you have to break. And you have to realize it will be, it will be scary to leave. That's just normal. But it'll be so much better. You've got to work your way up to that. You're not in a hurry. You're not going to do it overnight. But it's okay to be scared. Anybody would be. And frankly, you're smart enough to know, and this lady, I bet, knows this. You know what's coming. When you do leave, you know the hell, and I mean hell, he's going to unleash on you. He's going to be beyond ugly, vicious attacks. Because you've had the nerve now to take some of his money, and it's all his money, and his kids, and, and maybe sully his reputation. And, he, and the loss of control for a narc is the worst thing of all. Oh, you're going to pay and you know you're going to pay. That's why you get strong. That's why you get ready. So that when you leave, you can withstand Niagara Falls coming after you because it's going to. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about this, Gigi. She wants to get him in front of a psychologist uh, legally and have him properly and legally diagnosed. I, I, frankly, I wouldn't waste the time, my dear lady. And, and I'll tell you why. Um, he'll just get it. And, and this is this is how the, the legal game is played. He, the court doesn't care. The court doesn't care if he's diagnosed as a narcissist because most courts don't understand what that means. They don't care and you've wasted your money. Uh, the, the, the psychologist might not diagnose him or you know what he'll do? He'll get some fly-by-night psychologist to say he's not. So you, <laughs> it doesn't help. That is not going to be your problem. Uh, you just, you'd use a leverage you can legally, but don't try to prove he's a narc. In fact, courts don't like that terminology. You can't throw those terms around. Now they're true in almost every case I've had in terms of people calling in, yeah, it's a narc, but you, you can't say that. All the court cares about is, is evidence and his behavior, the things he said, the things he's done, verbal harassment, physical violence, uh, you know, uh, not ca taking care of the kids. Uh, money control, you have you just say, here's what he's done. Here's what he said. That will carry some weight. Not not calling him a narcissist because they don't know what that means. Yeah, attorneys and judges should be more informed, this TikToker says, and prepared in this subject in order to help us. Man, you got that right. We need education. I'm hoping attorneys and judges listen to my material, read my books, because they need to get a clue. Because the narc manipulates the system but brilliantly. They're masterful at this. And we want the judges and attorneys to figure it out. So as at least the attorney that you work with better have more than a clue, better be well-versed or you get another attorney. This isn't just divorcing a jerk or a selfish person. This is a narc, whole different category of evil, intent, and destruction. These are folks... All of David's books will tell you that the divorce is biblical. Absolutely, it's biblical. And I wouldn't recommend anything that I didn't think was taught in the Word of God. I've graduated from two seminaries. My dad made me go to one, Dallas Theological Seminary, before I even got my psychology degree. He didn't make me. But I said, Dad, you're right. I want the foundation of the Word. And that continues to be the foundation of everything I do and say I hope in my life. Not perfect. Of course, I sin. But always working. And I don't recommend anything in these books or anything in my phone advice sessions that isn't solidly based on the Word of God. Otherwise, I'm not doing my job. That's why when you see the YouTubes, and some can be quite good, uh, people that don't know Jesus and don't believe in the Bible, they are literally making it up as they go along. <laughs> and you know what? Uh, I, I need to have a foundation of the Word of God. If you don't want that, then you don't want me, because that's what I'm doing. And you have a biblical reason to divorce a narc. Chronic, Never going to stop emotional abuse. 1 Corinthians 7.15 is the hallmark verse. I explained that in the Escaping Your Narc book and a book I'm working on right now uh, for another book on the aftermath of divorce and working on feeling on guilt and shame. They'll be coming out in the fall. Yes, you have. And many other places in Scripture support this. Abandonment by the non-believer? Absolutely. Uh, adultery even one time? Yes, that's a reason. But also chronic emotional abuse? No question. As if God would want you to continue to suffer every day of your life and have all kinds of physical diseases and lose your children and lose respect and lose your voice 
and, and grow and grow further apart from God and be destroyed because you have to stay with a man that you come to find out as a narc? Of course not. That's not our God. He's far more gracious than that. A lot more gracious than the dumb people uh, who want you to stay in that marriage. It's like you're you've fallen into a lion's den and the lions are hungry. And these and these Pharisees, these pastors, these ch- Christian counselors who are clueless, worse than that in some cases, just absolutely ignorant. And they and they're telling you, no, you well, you ended up in the lion's den. Uh, too bad. You have to stay there and be torn to shreds. They won't help you get out. Well, that's ridiculous. God says, get out. I'll help you get out. Because you know, this is this is a good analogy because narcs are like lions, they don't change. Lions have instinct. They will eat you. If they're hungry, they will eat you. They will destroy you. That's the narc. He ain't ever going to change. People like to tell me uh, when I'm doing some interviews and they're not quite sure where I'm coming from, well, are you saying, Dr. Clark, that that the narc will simply can't change? And they're shocked when I say, yeah, that's exactly what I say. That's exactly what I mean. <laughs> are you, are you, I can't. They, they don't know what to say. No, no, I understand them. If you have a bona fide narc on your hands, listen to me. They're not going to change. There, I said it. I haven't seen it in 40 years. Oh, this is, yeah, this is a lady that's finding out her her husband, her narc husband, is uh, involved with another woman. Well, what a shock. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. In fact, this case, it was a man. They spent four days together in a tent. Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, you know what? Sin is sin, but that's nasty. That's a deal breaker. Get the heck away from him. My goodness gracious. Either one, of course, is awful. Man alive. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. They get worse with age. Very good point, uh, Milan. Exactly. In many cases, n- normal people that are edgy or stressed or, you know, uh, angry will mellow over time. And as grandparents, they're wonderful, not the narc. They do get worse. Because as you age, you get you you lose control and uh and the ability, you know, to attract women if it's if it's a man and and they hate that. They become bitter, they become meaner with age because they're just hanging on to their control. They don't change is exactly right. They get worse. So get out now. Don't be thinking he's gonna mellow. Uh-uh. He will get worse and worse and worse. Yeah. Yeah, they call they all call all kind. It's toxic is a good word to use, Kiana. It is toxic, absolutely toxic. Yeah. How can I imagine dealing with an ex narc I had children with? Okay, that's why I wrote this book. It's in here. I didn't want a divorce. Now what? You'll get some good strategies in with younger as well as older children. All right. And if you've got older children who are rejecting you, who are have turned against you, as I said earlier, that's my adult children who break your heart book. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Does the narc try to get your kids to hate you, says this one TikTok person, Tara. Yeah, absolutely. That is his goal in life, and he'll do it. This this is the evil part of it. Over years, event after event, behind closed doors, if you cry, if you get emotional, he'll make things up too to make you look bad in front of the kids. And yes, he does want the kids to hate you. He wants to win, even if you stay with him. If you're crazy enough to stay with him, okay, he'll still have the kids turned against you, and he'll be the shining attention. But but if you leave him, oh, even more so, he'll turn them against you, so you're alone. And he'll say to other people, look, uh, her own kids have turned against her. I, I must be the one that's right. Oh, that's why you get out as soon as you possibly can. And and part of the enough is enough, but it's preparing your kids and telling them the truth, all right? Not to trash the narc but to simply tell the truth so they understand what dad's about so you can make sure you can maintain a relationship with them. You're not cutting them off from their father. Oh, no. But you want to have a relationship with them too. Yeah, boy. If they cut them off, that's fine. Okay, look at this. It's 8.30. Look, time flies when we're having fun, doesn't it, my friends? Thank you so much for joining. All the great input. Uh, Hope it's been helpful to you. And again, keep in mind, do not go to a marriage counselor with a narc. You've got all these books. Uh, go to the website, davidclarkphd.com, Clark with an E, for all my materials. Until the next live stream, we're going to talk about how to choose the right counselor for your individual work. Okay? So we're signing off with Phil Dugas. Phil Dugas' help.